Hey everyone, this is Sperry, and today I am bringing you a new segment, which is a Toontown podcast. And the podcast will be me featuring some of my friends and also some people that you might know, some well-known YouTubers and streamers, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the person I'm interviewing and a little bit about the game and everything in between. And today on the very first episode, I'm with a very special guest. Um, his name is CC, um, and his old YouTube channel was Malo45. Hello, hello. It's good to be here. It's been a while for you, hasn't it? It has been a while. I don't think I've made a video since February, I want to say. Hmm. I actually had a I had a video planned, and then I started doing it, and I kept messing up, and I rage quit, yeah. basically. What was your idea for that video? Oh, uh, what, was, what was my idea? Oh. I think it was the, um... It was the next part of, uh... Comparing Toontown Rewritten to, um, like, Toontown Online, comparing, like, the mini changes and whatnot, and then I kind of just, like I said, I kept, like, there was a certain point in the video where I kept just fumbling over my words, and I kept rambling, and not, and kept repeating myself, and then I just called it quits for the day, I was like, I was just like, I'm not feeling it today, I was doing another day, and I, and that day has not come, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that makes sense, and I guess that's not really an idea somebody's going to steal, because, the point of that wasn't really to have an original idea. Your point was to make it better than other people who've tried that idea, right? Yeah. I'm not I'm not going to name any specific names, but I have seen videos from other well-known YouTubers that try to do that, but I feel like to do that you need to your the video needs to be like kind of in depth and a little long-ish. And the videos I saw were only like five minutes long. I'm just like, I think it depends on what you're looking for because I I know when I was going to make one of those videos when I first started playing TTR, I planned on making it like five to ten minutes. Then I really just tried to focus on I guess the big picture changes and the most important ones. So I think it really depends on what's focused on more so than the length. But I agree that what you're doing will be original and pretty interesting if you ever decide to finish it. Yeah, fair enough. I yeah, okay. That's that's fair enough because I was literally looking for li like everything. Yeah, I think it just depends on what people are looking for because I, I think that's um kind of a difference there. But I definitely see where you're coming from, and I think that type of video has a place online, and hopefully will get finished someday. Yeah, it's just that I'm pretty sure once I if I ever finish the video, I'm going to like someone's going to be like, "Hey, you forgot to mention this," or I'm going to realize it. I'm just going to be like, "Well, yeah. darn." You, don't, you just have to try your best, right? I mean, that's pretty much... Yep, I have a list. I have a list on Notepad, so that whenever I think of something or see something, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a difference, and I'll just jot it down, and hmm. I will have it in front of me whenever I start making the video. Hmm. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, I am was going to ask the audience, I don't think everyone knows probably your entire YouTube background, just because you have been making videos for a long time, and I'm sure that not everyone watching now was watching 10 years ago. So um, would you mind maybe just telling people a little bit about your history on Toontown and on YouTube? Well, Toontown, I remember the first night I started playing Toontown. It was a summer night. It was 2006. And I was just in my parents' bedroom watching TV. And, you know, I saw a commercial for Toontown. You, I'm sure you remember the commercial. Oh, yeah. You know, where it start with a real life setting and then be like, if you think, see, you're ready for Toontown. I remember one of that dude with like the crazy voice as well. Do you, remember, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. I don't. Think it was it's so. just like a guy. I'm trying to remember what, exactly what it sounded like, but it was just this guy who was like yelling some shit about how it was a game that would never die or something like that. I mean, he wasn't uh, are wrong. Talking, are you talking about the trailer? I think the like the minute long trailer. That yeah, was that was like... on, that was on TV as well. I never actually saw that one on TV. I didn't see that one until I was on YouTube, but no, yeah. That, that was also saw... on TV. Okay, well. I, that, I don't know if it was on every TV, I just remember seeing it as a kid, and I thought the game was fucking retarded at first. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, dang. Well, that we, we differ there, because I actually, it was probably, I saw the commercials for probably like a year or two before mm -hmm. I actually started playing the game, and every time I saw the commercial, I was like, dang, I want to play that game, it looks fun. Once I actually downloaded the game, I liked it a lot. I was like mesmerized as a kid, I would just walk around and like absorb myself in the world, but those but those commercials did not do it justice, in my opinion. No, probably not, but yeah, I was the same way. Anyway, like, I saw the commercial that night, and I just asked my mom, like, well, well. Go download Toontown on your on your laptop because I don't have my own computer because I was nine years old. Yeah, and I'm sure that was I not a gaming it. laptop. 
No, of course not. It was my mom's work computer. Oh, nice. But it's it was it's just tuned down. I so. can just imagine if it was like a work computer given by an employee. It's like we've seen you've logged a thousand hours on Disney's Toontown Online. <laughs> <laughs> thousand hours yeah that would uh that'd be cause for concern but yeah. i played it and since it was like nine o'clock and i had a bedtime because i was a little kid i only got to play it for a little bit but like i was hooked instantly R- remember I when... oh sorry do you remember when i had a bedtime like years after you did oh yeah oh yeah i remember <laughs> sorry it was it was a christmas it was christmas break and like we were doing cfos or something and you said my in it was like almost three for me, yeah. and you were like, "Oh, my bedtime is like fifteen minutes." I was like, "You have yeah. a bedtime." I didn't want to cut you off, sorry. Oh no, it's fine. But yeah, I played, and I I only got to play for an hour that night, and uh, then I had to go to bed, and I like literally couldn't sleep <laughs> all night because um, I was thinking about playing Toontown. I loved the game so much, and then the next day, when I woke up, I actually forgot my password, oh and my I spent like hours trying to remember what it was and then and then like i decided to just say screw it make a new account because i hadn't gotten very far and it was i was still it was like i was still on a free trial so it's not like i'd spent any any money had been spent yet but and then like in the middle of making the account i was like oh i remember it Um, i remember my password and then i went on it was was your first tune ever master milton was that the first it was was master milton yeah my first tune i ever created was jabber socks so what was it Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought it was King Fireball, because I know King no, Fireball. He was the first one I got up high, but the first tune I ever created in Mega Tune and played with on the trial was Jabber Socks. Oh, okay. I know well, that sounds, like, really weird, but... It's not the it's not the worst first tune ever, because most yeah. most people's first tunes are uh, pretty, pretty cringeworthy. Yeah, you have, like, a fat body and, like, three different colors. Buck teeth, you know. The whole works. Yeah, would, I don't think you can have buck teeth, but that would, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, again, you want to talk anything about, like, when you made YouTube, and maybe especially the part around 2012 where you kind of hit it big? Well, YouTube, I didn't, I think discovering Toontown YouTube was pretty pretty surreal for me, because I played about for, like, a year without even thinking about YouTube, and then, like, I just had the thought one day, I was like, huh, what if there? Do wonder if people make videos about Toontown on YouTube? And I literally, I just went on YouTube, searched Toontown. It's like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. That was probably mid to late 2007, I think. Yeah. I think the first video I ever watched was. I'm pretty sure this is one of the most viewed Toontown videos of all time. But it was just like the Toontown introducing level seven gags. Oh yeah, I know that that has like a million views. Yeah, and it was just those two two players on the test server just mm-hmm. showing level seven. Yeah, that guy was a huge YouTuber at the time because he was, like, the first one to post everything because he was on test. Yep. And then I remember that one. I remember Toontown Battle Royale. Hmm. I don't, I don't remember, remember that, that one. It, it's a pretty old video. It was, like... It wasn't anything special. It was just, like, a montage hmm. of, like, this dude doing stuff. It was this old, old stuff. This is before level sevens were around. Oh, man. And, like... Like, it had music from some game. I don't remember what the hmm. game was, but it's super yeah. nostalgic. Whenever I watch Damn. it, I'm just, wow. I know, um, what was it? The ones I started out watching was there was a guy who did, um, what was it Toontown Glitch videos in, like, 2005 called King of Unsolved. King of Un- I never heard of him. No, his videos were complete crap. He used Weird Al's <laughs> White and Nerdy in every single... That was that. It just looped. That was the only um, audio for it. And then also, oh, I think I do remember that. Oh yeah. And do do you know um you know Operation Tune Up Fireball? Oh yeah, of course. yeah. She made she was probably the first big YouTuber on Toontown back in like 2005. Um, she had another channel and it had all copyrighted music. I don't remember exactly what it was. It started with an H, but she was a huge YouTuber and all of her videos went like completely viral and they were good for, like for the time. Like you know, by modern standards, everything is going to be crap, but for the yeah. time, they were good. Funnily enough, um, I didn't look at her channel until like she had deleted like. A ton of videos. Yeah. So I never saw any of her like really early stuff, which yeah. was kind of unfortunate. It wasn't. It wouldn't hold up well today. Today, but it was just nostalgic and it was innovative for its time. It was like actual video editing attempts done by someone who was young. Like, think about it. Like over ten years ago. So I thought it was cool. Yeah, and she was probably. I. I don't. I think she's like around our age or a little younger. But she was obviously, like, a little kid. Yeah, I know. It was insane. I was, like, five or six when I was watching those videos. Yeah, it was, the, it was easy to be impressed. And it was easy to impress people. Oh, it was. 
I got so many views on such mediocre videos. Could you imagine posting a five-story cog building solo at regular speed with a song that just loops over itself and ends up echoing twice? Yeah, no, that would. And, like, that got 120,000 views when I posted that in, like, 2007 or 8 or whatever it was. Yeah, that wouldn't fare well today. <laughs> Not yeah. at all. Even, like, I, I can say this honestly, ever since I've come back, you know, in 2016, 2017 to YouTube, I found that I have to make a lot better videos than I used to. Like, back in the day, I would just upload raw footage, and it would all just be filler crap, and I try to actually put some level of effort into my videos and not just post something for the sake of posting it, unless I'm doing, like, something troll, like, you know, like, how to unlock level, like, all the level 7 gags or something. <laughs> that was so funny. That still has, that has 25,000 views, and it gets 4,000 views a month by itself. Oh greatest baits in Toontown history. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. Um, so, again, I'm just kind of curious. It, wh how would you quickly summarize the channel you made, you know, a little bit later on once, you know, Frizzy and Kyle and Lefty and all those people got involved? Like, if you're just going to quickly summarize it for someone who didn't know about that time period. In 2012? Or, you know, like, one, maybe not 2012, but you know what I'm talking about. That era of YouTube when you started making a lot of the rant videos. Well... The thing about the um my rant videos and whatnot back in that era when I started them, um to be honest, they weren't very good. None of my videos were very good. Like, looking back on it now. And like like you said, like like you are I think you said something about like filler. Like a lot of my videos that's what they were, filler. I was just like a lot of times I was just like, Oh, Oh, uh, we're doing a VP, and uh, I am in a Skype call. Let me just upload this because why not? <laughs> oh, it'll man. get it'll get views, and then and then my uh, rant videos were like didn't have any structure or organization to them, and it was basically just me rambling and repeating myself for ten or fifteen minutes. I still do that today, and that still does well on YouTube because people just love to kind of just have the background noise. I, that's my theory, at least, because my most successful videos are usually the ones where I just ramble incoherently about a topic and maybe hit a few good points and also swing and miss a lot. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, actually, the whole thing about background noise, when I used to, like, avidly, quote-unquote, watch, like, Toontown rants and stuff, like, Frizzy, Frizzy's early stuff, or, like, Kyle Lefty stuff, mm -hmm. I would just hit play and then, like go to another tab and just listen to it while this, I was doing whatever. This might sound like kind of a stretch, I don't know, but I think it's kind of an example of another big YouTube channel that kind of doesn't have, you know, the quality you would expect, but have you ever heard of the YouTuber Leafius here? Leafy, yes, I have. Okay, I so I, my point being is that I'm not saying that the content's comparable at all, but I'm saying the same idea of background noise because I don't feel like those are the type of videos you would watch just on merit of being amazing, but they're videos you watch for background noise because you at least, you know somewhat identify with the personality, because I don't know how else you'd, you know, you'd sit through a lot of those videos, or even, like, the videos that we made in 2012. Yeah, because it, like, it doesn't, it didn't require all of your attention, like, especially if it was just filler, VP, CFO stuff, it was just us clowning around. Also, a, no a side note, um, my videos were really offensive back in the day. We used to, like, especially the ones where I was in calls with people, I, we mm -hmm. used to say whatever. We didn't care who was watching, yeah. like, saying, like, racial slurs like the n-word like yeah. whenever i go back and like watch my videos and like hear me saying i'm like oh my god yeah i definitely haven't done anything racist on this channel um i'm not sure if alex has i don't think so i don't think anything i've posted actually had alex being racist i'm like 95 percent sure but because remember those um ods episodes never made it up thank god <laughs> but um but yeah um no, I, I would say that I say things that aren't, you know, correct when I get angry. Like, I'll say things like I'll call people, like, retarded or something. But that's probably the most I take it now. I, when I get angry, I try to make it, you know, just me cursing in general, not, you know, intentionally being... Actually, I know what the worst thing I ever did was. Somebody made, like, 40 bot accounts to dislike my video because they were just, like... I think they were, like, mentally ill or something. Like, I don't want to judge them, actually, because I know who it was. And I, I, I've actually made peace with them, but at the time I was calling them, like, autistic and all this crap because I was like, I don't know. I, that stuff just got to me, and that was my own problem, but, you know. I think that's probably the worst thing I've done on this channel, but I try to not take it too far anymore. The worst thing I probably ever did was, like, making random call-out videos for no reason. Oh, yeah. No, I've avoided that on this channel, thank God. There's no drama anymore in this community. That's another thing. 
back in 2012, I don't know if all of you remember, but all the YouTubers would, like, make videos about each other and hate each other, and it would be all, like, it would literally be, like, drama alert, I guess. Actually, I would say that, like, those drama channels that had their little run a couple years ago on YouTube reminded me a lot of the videos we used to make in 2012. Yeah, it was... Oh, look, it's actually so funny to look back on it, but it would be like me versus Frizzy or like Kyle versus Frizzy, me versus <laughs> oh, Kyle, man. me versus Kyle and Lefty. Yeah. So <laughs> a tag team. Tag team. Oh, uh, yeah. But no, I would say the best part, in fact, I give a lot of the people now who are big a lot of credit for this. Um, I'm friends with like pretty much everyone in this community, you know, like I'm on good terms with everyone. I make controversial videos and a lot of the people don't agree with me. Like, I'll give you an example. I'm sure Smirky would not agree with the things I've said about, you know, the TTR team entirely. But yet he still, like, likes me as a person, even though I put an opinion different than his, and he's always respectful to me. And, like, I made a video about Mega Snoop, like, making fun of his rapping before I even knew him well. And admittedly, it was, like, pretty self-deprecating as well. Like, I didn't make it, like, in an offensive way, but his reaction to that video was not to just, like, be offended by it. He just laughed it off, and he had a good time, and that's actually kind of how I got to meet him. So, I think that's... a pretty big shift in the way the YouTubers are now, and it's a good shift. Yeah, no one takes themselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember when... The video's not there anymore. I don't know I don't know why, but Frizzy made a video about Termination, and he mentioned Kyle, and, mm -hmm. like, I remember Kyle got insanely butthurt, and they weren't friends Yeah. after that. Like, it was... <laughs> Could you imagine any of us, like, reacting to the point where if someone made a video making fun of their video, admitted, like, literally reacted and poking fun at their video, even if it was lighthearted, could you imagine any of us not taking it up the ass? Um, I couldn't... Well, any of us, do you mean, like, me and you and like, who else? Kyle, Lefty, Frizzy, like, anyone in, like, our little section of the community in 2012. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine anyone not taking it up. the ass. I remember. I remember one time I made like a small little joke about Frizzy, but it, like I said, it was just a joke and good fun. And Frizzy left like a paragraph in the comments. I was like, "Bro, calm down." It's it was just a serious. different dynamic. I mean, I don't really blame uh, everyone, even blame us entirely. I think it was just a different dynamic then, and I think it's good that it shifted. Yeah, absolutely. Cause... And. Definitely. I remember that both you and I were a little bit apprehensive about when, you know, like, once people stopped just being edgelords and kind of, you know, grew up with people in this community. Like, our first initial gut reaction to it was like, I don't know about this. And then later on, it's like, oh, well, this is yeah. how actual mature people act. This is kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, we were all like, well, Frizzy, Frizzy was, wait, it was like... We were 14. Give us a little bit of a break. I mean, come on. Could you imagine if you, like had all of your personal fucking drama put onto the fucking internet when you were 14 years old for, like, thousands of people to watch. Yeah. Well, I wasn't quite that young, but I was, like, between 15 and 17. That's how, like, young all Kyle and Lefty were. Um, Frizzy, Frizzy doesn't really have an excuse because he was an adult. But he also, I'll be fair, did not get involved as much with the personal stuff. He would use examples of his friends, but, like, he didn't, I would say at least on YouTube, if we're just talking about the videos themselves, his most of his videos were not about drama. Yeah, no, he never made a video that was like, alright, today I am calling out yeah. Kyle or the Adonic, I'm not, man. No, I'm not saying that, like, he never participated in drama, like, that's a human thing, but he mostly kept it off of YouTube. Yeah, and that was probably the smart idea, and that's, like what I like doing nowadays, mm -hmm. like, when I actually make videos, like, all my videos are just about the game, and it's not me, like, shitting on anyone. Well, I, I, I shit on people, but I shit on people who, like, develop a Toontown server or something. I don't, I don't, like, shit on, like, random YouTubers. Okay, yeah, they, they kind of, I mean, criticism is good for, like, yeah. Toontown private servers, especially, especially Toontown rewritten, because we I think don't need it, to get, yeah, I agree. We don't need to get into that right now, but we all know, uh, mm -hmm. we can, we're gonna talk about it a little awesome. bit later. Maybe. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm good. asking you the fewest TTR questions just because I feel like you don't have, like, no offense, but I feel like that's not really, like, your area of specialty. You don't know the developers, like, super well. No, no, I don't. I just... Yeah, hopefully you understand that. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so, um, I'm just gonna go through these questions, um, so... Would you, would you say that your early influence, like, making those YouTube videos at a younger age affected what you decided to do with your life? Because I know that you are currently kind of on a path where you're getting a communications degree and you want to look into broadcasting, which is a very similar thing to kind of what you did in your videos, especially the 2017 ones. 
Yeah, uh, it definitely it definitely influenced me because I started I started doing it, and then people were actually enjoying it, which you know obviously I can't be the way I was when I was sixteen, but like it mm-hmm. was a start. But my people were like enjoying my early work. They were enjoying yeah. like hearing me talking about talk about stuff, and I was like, "Huh, maybe I could, you know, use my voice in the future as a career." Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite for me. Like I'm doing fucking computer science as my career. That's probably the least social job you could ever have. And in general, I'm not a really social person outside of YouTube. Like I talk and make the videos, and I think that's a good thing for me because I'm not someone who. Spends a lot of time, you know, being super extroverted or anything like that. But I connected with people in a pretty social way online. So that, at least, it's kind of a nice thing to have in my life, I would say. Yeah, of course. You know, you connect with... How many subscribers do you have? At least a 1,000. Yeah, I'm at like 1,077, I think, right now. I'm sure that number will probably move around a bit in the future. Because yeah. my, my growth is really slow since I just came back. But I think we're, I think we're doing just fine. Yeah, definitely. And you, you were very... I noticed you were, like, very nice to all your viewers and subscribers and how you, like, go out of your way to reply to everyone's comment. Yeah, I usually try to do that, especially because at the current size I'm at, it's just really easy to do that. Like, if I ever get to, like, way more of a size, I couldn't do that reasonably, but as of now, it's just real easy to do it. It takes, like, maybe 15 minutes out of my day, and it, it makes me feel good because it's, like, I'm connecting with people. Yeah, and I'm sure they they feel, I'm sure your viewers appreciate that. Yeah. Because, you know, you could just be... Because, you know, there are those, like, YouTubers that will just straight up ignore or, like, deprecate their audience. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's fine to do if that's your shtick. If that's, like, what you do, that's just not what I'm about. Especially, like, right now, I'd say. Yeah, but, you're, you're no a dose of Buckley. Nah. But, I mean, he, I, I think it's fine to be a dose of Buckley. That's just not me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um. So... What would you say, this is kind of a question you might not have an answer to, but are there any specific YouTubers, like, I'm not even talking, like, Toontown YouTubers, I'm talking anyone online who makes content who you think has um, inspired the way that you go about making your videos, or also the way you want to, like, do your broadcasting communication stuff? Um, there aren't many influences, but there is, speaking of which, like, a very minor influence is probably a dose of Buckley, because... Um, dude, have you ever seen, like, his parody? Yeah, I've seen all of his videos. I'm a huge... I'm I'm not a huge fan, but I watch, like, fucking tons of YouTube, and I've seen most of his videos, especially his old classic ones. Yeah. Um, so you know, like, Jason's Opinions or whatever? They were just, like, parodies, and they were, like, really poorly made. Yeah, that that was fucking hilarious, where he just is like, hey, guys, and, like, half the fucking video is his intro and outro. Yeah, and, like, and then I think he also made another, like, serious video explaining, like what to do and what not to do if you're going to make, like, a commentary mm-hmm. video or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, I took some of that to heart because I was like, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. this Jason Japinion's shit is, like, actually, like, unironically some what my videos used to be. So, like, in my, in my newer videos, this is, like, an influence, like, now in the present. Mm-hmm. In my earlier video, in my newer videos, they're way more cohesive and mm-hmm. way more constructed. They don't actually have a script to them because I'm yeah. actually, I'm way too lazy. But you've seen how long my videos Making are. Making a script right for like most videos if you're not a professional, it's really hard to read off the script and have it not sound fucking awful. I can say that from experience because I've tried to use scripts like once or twice and I always ended up giving up when I did that. Yeah, so I didn't like, I didn't follow buckley's advice like all the way but i did Mm -hmm. like make it i at least had an outline i had an outline of stuff i was going to talk about so one i didn't forget anything and two i knew what topic to move on to like immediately instead of being like um oh no i forgot what to talk about i I guess you could kind of say that's what we're doing now because i have a list of questions i'm asking you and i'm we're just kind of talking in between it also helps that we've known each other for like over 10 years you know that makes it a little easier to just have a nice casual conversation but Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I, mean, I, I would definitely agree that um, Buckley's actually definitely a really good YouTuber to take that type of advice from just because he's an audio specialist. I mean, you'd, you'd expect that he would have some good advice. Yeah. And so, don't want to be another Jason's opinions. <laughs> that's true. I think it's okay to be a Jason's opinions when you're 14, though. Again. Oh, yeah, that's that's fine. But I'm... Yeah, but when, once you reach, like, the 18-year-old mark, that's when it's a little bit cringy. Yeah. So, um... I, I'm actually a little bit curious, even for you at this point in your life. Um, 
I know that both you and I were very heavily involved with online friends. It's like a huge part of our lives back in the 2012 days. Like that was a huge part of what we spent our days doing, you know, talking to them. That was like our social life was talking to people on the internet quite heavily in those years. Um, how many of those people are you still in contact with on a regular basis? And how many hours a week would you say you spent talking to your like online friends that you've met from Toontown in particular? Um, I'm not in contact with like regular by regular contact. Do you mean like talking every day or like no? Like I would say like once a week or once a month even is pretty regular contact if it's consistent. Like you and I, we don't talk that many hours, but when we do talk, it doesn't feel weird, and like we we still talk pretty consistently, even if it's not a lot of hours. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Okay. Like, do you have yeah. that type of like friendship with a lot of people still from back in the day? I don't want to say a. I can't really say a lot because I used to have. Like, as you know, because, mm -hmm. like, you, you were there. I used to have a ton of friends oh, yeah. that I yeah, talked I to every day, you know. Those... Yeah, that was the fucking way it was in 2012, and that was pretty fun, in a way. Like, yeah. I know it was, like, people think it's fucking weird, but I, I think I think it was, I don't think it was that weird, actually. It was just a way of socializing. Yeah, but, um, there are still a few people I am in regular contact with. Like, to name a few, there's you, of course, there's Connor, there's Chris, too. Mm -hmm. Um, those are... Oh, Alex, of course. Yeah, no, that's good. Ours. Yeah, Alex Land is going to be on episode two. He thinks he's on episode one, but I'm not going to tell him. He'll just find out if he actually checks my YouTube channel. Oh, why? Why does he want to be on episode one so badly? Oh, I don't know. Because Alex just does that shit, you know, where he just like wants something and he just decides to go for it. Yeah, well, just for the sake sorry. of it. Yeah, but um, Alex. no, I actually prepared a, a series of questions for Alex that are a little bit less serious that he can have fun with. So I think it'll be a good time. Oh, when are you doing that video? I'm actually kind of... I kind of want to... Um, I definitely want to watch that. Yeah, I, I don't know when I'm recording it, but it's probably going to be up the week after yours. I want to kind of do these at least a week apart while I have quite a few. And um, okay. I, I guess I can just say who else is going to be on the podcast, you know, just for the general, if anyone cares. Um, I've got five people on, including you so far. Um, I got you, I got Alex, and then I got um, Mega Snoop, Smirky, and Gag Strategists. Those are the first Oh, five. wow, you got the... You got the big guns coming See, through. It seems like I went for like the people who are like the biggest YouTubers, but those are actually like the people I know the best in this community. Like I watch Mega Snoop stream pretty often in Smirky stream, and then Gag is often in those chats, so I got to know him a bit too. Yeah, watch uh watch your podcast with those three get like thousands of views, and then the podcast <laughs> with me and Alex get like two hundred. Hey, I don't know. I'm just making the videos for fun. Like I'll get a couple of bucks even if it goes viral, but um, no. I honestly, that, the only reason I picked those people is because I think it'll be an interesting having them on, and I think um, I can ask them some different types of questions than they usually get. Yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, so that, that's pretty much where the podcast is headed, if any of you are curious. So, um, let's see what else we got to ask. Here's a good question. So, when you made your Toontown Rewritten Tune, which you no longer have, you sold it, but... When you made your TTR tune, why did you decide to make it something completely unassociated with your original image? Like, no Spade, no Master Milton. Um, because at the time, uh, I had just quote-unquote quit, like, two months prior. The only reason I got back on was because I had, I had a few friends. I think I had, I don't know if you know my friends Jack and Laura. Uh, I know uh, Jack a little bit. I don't know Laura too well. I think I met her once or twice. Shouts to Jack and Laura, if you're watching. You're probably not. But anyway, they were playing, and I was in a call with them, and I was bored. I was like, fuck it, I'll just make a tune. I don't even remember what his first name was. I actually changed his name so many times, but like... Um, it was Infinity Sequence at one point, and then it was like some other edgy name before that, right? Yeah, all the names were edgy, except like the last one. But the reason I made it like undercover and whatnot is because like basically the reason I quit is because like when I quit, and like October, it was October of 2014, yeah, October mm -hmm. of 2014, like, the community was getting, like, it was getting stupid, like, this is when, uh, Lefty and, what was that dude's name? There was, like, some other hacker. Which one? The one who made the Python injector? No, 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 it was, like, they were doing, like, malicious stuff, like, oh. shutting down the servers. Yeah, I know very little about that time period. I was not in the community at all, and I really have nothing to say about it, but, yeah. Okay. No. Oh, it was Maverick. That's who it was. Lucky oh, yeah, okay. Was that the same Maverick yeah. who tried to, um, what was it, SWAT Alex? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think much. so, though. I don't think it was. I think that was just a duck, um, who he got terminated by giving him the fake back nine buttons. Okay. 
Well, anyway, people were getting swatted. People were getting doxxed. It was it was actually out of control, and that's why I wanted to quit because yeah. that's the main reason I wanted to quit because the community was actually just devolving into like degeneracy, yeah. like I had never seen before. You so know why, why I quit, quit, right? You know why I quit, ma- closed my channel. It wasn't because I didn't like making videos. It was because I was actually like my le- what my quality of life was going down significantly because of the harassment I was getting on the internet. I'm not gonna. Get, yeah. I mean, like, whatever. It happened a lot of years ago. I've forgiven everyone who participated. It's not that big of a deal now. But honestly, I didn't feel safe continuing. Like, my internet would get throttled every day, and like, I would get deliveries every day, and like, tons of messages on the phone every single day. Like, it just was not a healthy way to live. And I knew for a fact, and I was actually correct. Thank God that once I closed my channel and like just ignored everybody, it went away. So like, that's how I got the fucking I guess cyberbullying to stop. And I learned a lot from that experience. Like, I'm really careful now. Like, I don't really leave myself open to a lot of that shit as much as I used to. But I still, like, that was fucked up. I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm still a little bit salty that happened. Oh, yeah. Those people should honestly be ashamed of themselves. And if you're watching, you know who you you should be ashamed. Yeah, I mean, I'm Um, not, I I don't have a vendetta or anything. But it's just really, you know, it's kind of, the world's kind of a fucked up place. When I have to close my YouTube channel because people won't even fucking leave me alone, like IRL. Yeah, it. I don't know. I mean, they were kids. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Out of that. No, I think it. I think there are a lot of things going on, and I don't take it, you know, personally. I'm upset that it happened. I'm not upset at the people. If that makes sense. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. So on the same topic, actually, why do you think the 2012 community was the way it was? Do you think it was just because everyone was an edgy teenager, or do you think it was like? Was that what people wanted? Like, what do you think it was? Was it just the demographics? Because that's kind of, I guess, what I lean towards thinking. Well, I feel like the demographics played a part in it. Because a lot of Toontown players in the, at the time were teenagers. Like, a yeah. lot of them were teenagers. And then most of the YouTube community were teenagers. Mm-hmm. Except, except for Frizzy. I think I think Frizzy's huge effect on the, on the community was... Uh, the wave of all those ranters. Like, Crazy, Frizzy created, like, Toontown Rant. He, like, pioneered it. Oh, he did. And paved the way for, like, me, Kyle, Lefty, and, like, anyone else who made rant videos. Like, mm. he, if, like, I don't really like the guy or anything, but I have to give him that, that he definitely, like, changed the community in a big mm. way. Yeah, I think his videos were very, um, influential. And they, and, like... Just a really good combination of having, like, a really good voice for it, and also having, like, in general, I would say, pretty advanced level of, like, making some people want to watch and be engaged with. And I certainly don't think that I would be able to have a successful channel the way that I have mine today if it, if he didn't, you know, kind of establish that groundwork. So, definitely, as a content creator, I think he was pretty monumental in allowing us to reach the level of success we did back then. Absolutely. So... Shouts to Frizzy. Good job. You uh, did, a, did a good thing. Which well, I don't know if it was a good thing for the people who watched it, because we were all fucking edgelords, but I mean, it was good for us. Yeah, but, you know, today we have... Today, we, people have taken that a step further with, like, streaming and making yeah. more commentary videos that aren't edgy and toxic. Yeah, but those would have come naturally. The specific type of video that Frizzy made was something that's almost, in my opinion kind of unique to this game you have very few games where you have such a really like angry kind of pessimistic person just kind of telling you exactly what they think about everything in in a lens that's more on the side of being judgmental than it is on you know just pandering or anything like that like he did not pander at all no that man did not give a single fuck about what anyone thought he was just like he it was basically just i'm just going to talk and record, I'm just going to record me talking, and I'm going to upload it, and, uh, fuck it. Yeah, it worked, though, and that's, honestly, like I said, I borrow heavily from his format today. I, I'm not in denial about that, and I think his his groundwork certainly helped a lot. I try to, I guess, be more funny and, like, be a little bit more, like, random and entertaining alongside it, as opposed to, you know, just being, having the humor come from the fact that a guy's getting upset. But, um, yeah. Definitely... Some pretty crazy stuff. And now here, here's an actual question for you. This might be a hard one to just answer with a yes or no, but overall, do you think the Toontown YouTube community is better off now, or was it better back in the quote-unquote glory days of 2012? It's probably better off now. It's like, oh yeah, it, it's gotta be better off now. There's no, it's like not even actually, 
you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't actually, like, keep up with Toontown YouTube, but, like... I know a bit about it, so... There's, like, it doesn't look like it's, like, toxic at all. It's anymore. not. Like, yeah, so... I'm the most toxic one on here, to give you an idea. Like, I am so toxic that many people in the community find me repulsive, and I'm probably the most neutered, watered-down version of a 2012 YouTuber today. Yeah, these if these people are offended by you, they wouldn't, uh... I don't know what mm -hmm. they would have done. Well, I wouldn't really say they're offended by me. I'd say that I'm just a little bit too intense and edgy for their taste, which is completely reasonable, if that makes sense. Like, I yeah. don't think people take what I'm saying personally. I think they just don't. It's not their cup of tea. They prefer to have someone who's a little bit more wholesome as opposed to someone who just gets angry and is, like, a pessimist about everything, which I kind of admittedly am. Yeah, because... I mean, Ga the th the big three, uh, which is probably, like, Gag Strategy, Mega Snoop, Smirky, you know, they, they're all, like, you know, just super positive dudes during their stream. Just, you know, it's just it depends. A happy environment. I'd say Smirky's the most positive of them. Mega Snoop, Aaron's not always positive, actually. Like, I don't know. He's, I would say that maybe, like, that's his reputation, but I don't know. The guy's, the guy's pretty real, actually, in my opinion. Well, like I said. Especially I right now while all the fucking, like, lag is going on. There are some lag. salty people in the community right now because a lot of people like can't even play the game properly because of the TTR lag right now. I didn't realize that because for me it's not that bad right now. I don't know why on my end that's not so bad, but a lot of people they'll just play the game for two seconds and crash. Well, I did not know that, but I have not been on the game. I thought I thought like Toontown rewritten lagging was a thing they fixed forever ago. Mm, it's kind of new now. I don't know what's going on. I think it's because of the doodles. Um, some people have said they disagree with me. That's just my guess, and I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but... We'll see. Oh, Wait, let me close the door. Good. I got some background audio. Hey, okay, boy. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Subscribe um, to CC. Oh, yeah, you didn't even give yourself a shout-out or tell people what your new channel was, you fucking idiot. It's, uh, it's CC capital. It's just two capital Cs. <laughs> yeah. It'll be it. in the description. It's also in my sub box. First up on the sub box. But, again, so, what were you saying, sir? I said, um, like I said about, like I said, you, you said Megasnoop was probably the most real, and after I said he was, like, super positive and whatnot, which I said, like, again, you know, take everything I said with a grain of salt. Yeah, because, and also um, relative to, like, what we were doing in 2012, he's, like, still positive. I'm just saying yeah, that, like... Of course. I, I don't feel like it's someone who's, like, trying to sugarcoat, like, the issues or just have, like, a completely carefree type attitude or something like that. Okay, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's just kind but, of like a moderate moderate balance, I'd say. Yeah, but regardless, the mm -hmm. community is better off now than it was back then, for sure. There's no refuting that. Yeah, and people are also a lot nicer. Like, the people who meet me now usually treat me nice and fairly respectful, like, I would say all the audiences of everyone, maybe also just because time has passed, are quite a bit more mature on an average basis. Not that everyone's, like, not going to be a spaz every now and then or something. Yeah. I remember, um... Those people were probably, like, really good to their fans. I remember back in... I remember back in 2012, I remember... Frizzy was obviously a jerk to some of his fans, and Kyle and Lefty were, like, super jerks to their fans, especially Kyle. Oh, yeah, Kyle I was probably the worst about it. Well, that's just, like, the way it was. Also, probably had a big difference, but back then, people did not give individual contributions to their streamers. Like, nowadays, if you're a streamer, you get subs and donations if you're nice to people. Or at least not a dick to them. Yeah, so that, that pays. Well, unless you're back. Tyler1, and then people donate to Trolley or something, <laughs> but, you know. Tyler1. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, definitely... So I, I think that's a bit, another big dynamic, just the fact that there's more benefit to being nice by people... As opposed to, you know, just any attention was good attention but back in the day. Yeah, because, I mean, if you were monetized and people came to your videos just to shit on you, they, you'd, they'd they still get your views and whatever and still would still benefit off of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll be real with, my, like, too, I was a pretty big dick to my fans in 2012, and so are you. Like, we were not exempt from this. Oh, no, of course not. Yeah, I was a... I just, want, I just feel like if we're going to mention everyone else in that group, we should at least include ourselves so we're fair to everyone. Yeah, you know, I thought... I honestly, like... I don't know. I put myself on a pedestal. I was just like, Oh, yes, don't don't talk to me, fans. <laughs> I am so far above you. Oh, like, yeah. whenever someone would, like, recognize me on the game, oh, I love you guys, I'd just be like, Oh, my God, so annoying. Oh, yeah. Don't I'm actually really happy and, like, excited when people recognize my videos now. It makes me feel like I have, like, a fucking purpose. It's weird, but I don't know. Back in the day, I was not as nice, though. I won't lie about that. 
And I was not as grateful. I think it's important to be grateful if you have people who actually enjoy watching you on a regular basis, because that's a pretty cool thing. Yep. I so, was not grateful here, or nice. Here is a pretty significant detour in the conversation. Um, there is a video game that you are currently playing that you are quite good at as compared to the rest of the world, and you make some money playing it. Um, what game is that? Um, what character do you play in that game, and how did you get started with that? Well... The game I play is Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U, or Smash 4 for short. Um, I play Sonic the Hedgehog, that is my main. I also secondary Sheik, but I play mainly Sonic. And um, I got it. I've always played Smash, like uh, 64, Melee, Brawl, but like I was like super casual with it, mostly because I was like a little kid. And I got into it like competitively in. 2014 because there's this thing called the melee documentary and it's like i don't remember how many parts it was it might be like nine or it's like around nine or ten parts all like around 30 to 45 minutes if i'm not mistaken and it's the documentary is basically like um chronicling like or telling about like each episode is about like one of the like melee's greatest players in history super smash brothers melee that is and it, like, just went super in-depth about, like, the competitive community as a whole. And, like, it made me want to get into competitive Smash. It actually did that for a lot of people. Like, the around the time it came out, a lot of people watched the Melee documentary. And, like, ever since then, Smash in general, like, Melee and Smash 4, which are, like, the two main games right now. Because Smash 64 and Brawl don't really get a lot of attention anymore. But, um... After the Melee documentary was released, Smash in general just saw, like, a huge growth, and now, like, like, I don't know if you knew this, but, uh, Evo, which is, like, a, just a tournament for fighting games in general, but, uh, Smash 4 was actually on ESPN, hmm. uh, wow. in last month. I did yeah, not know so, that. That's pretty yeah, impressive. Gotten, it was on ESPN, and it was on Disney XD, so it's hmm. actually gotten really huge. Disney XD, that's a pretty big platform. Yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, I have been playing that game competitively for almost three years now. It'll be like mm-hmm. it'll be about three years in November. You're not a pro or anything, right? You're just do it as like a hobby almost. Or do you want to go pro? I mean, I want to go pro, but I have to get I have to get that good first because I it's... got you. So you're somewhere like in like I guess sort of a semi pro stage right now. Well. I guess. I mean, I'm, a, I'm like, a solid player. Like, um, there was a, an event I went to called DreamHack Atlanta last month, and it, there were almost 400 entrants, and it was considered an S-tier event, which basically meant it was just a stacked event, mm-hmm. and I made it into... I made it out of pools into the top 64 bracket, so... Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so like I'm I'm definitely decent at the game and like compared to like everyone everyone else in the world or like just your casual player, like if they saw me play it they would think I was like a god at this game. Yeah, that but, makes like, sense. Relative to relative to the competitive scene as a whole, I'm I'm decent at the game. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Um have you ever considered making any videos, you know, talking about tournament smash or showing gameplay or anything like that? I mean I'm sure there's a demographic for that out there. Yes, but I don't I don't know. It would be really hard yeah. where I am now to get views for that because I'm not a top player mm-hmm. and top there are top players that actually make Smash content and people would rather watch content from them. Than but they not watch your Sonic? Me. Are there better Sonics out there than you? Oh, of course. There are plenty of better Sonics. I mean, like, are there like better Sonics that create shit, though? Let me think. Because if there's not, you probably have a demographic. Oh, there is, there is actually, um, probably the most notable, uh, YouTuber that, that plays Sonic and is definitely better than me is probably, uh, Supergirl Kells. She makes a lot of YouTube videos, but other than that, I can't really think of anyone hmm. right now. You might have an, you might have a niche then. You'd have to pretty much start over though, because you're not going to have Toontown fans watch that. Oh no, absolutely not. I would definitely have to, I would be on the grind for yeah. a while before I could, um, you know, get people to watch me. Mm-hmm. Your 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 gamer tag in Smash is CC though, right? Yeah, I was just like, I came up with that just because like I wanted something cool, but I don't want it to be like super edgy. So mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, well, CC is my initials, and CC sound it has a good ring to it. I'll just be CC. Should have gone with Infinity Sequence. 
Yeah, no, I, uh, fun fact, I actually entered my first tournament ever as Infinity Sequence. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's, it was it was pretty funny. Oh, that was, after that, I was just CC, though. Gotcha. Um, so, again, sort of another misdirection, but um, you've played a little bit of ODS, right? And a small amount of Altus? Yeah, I played I played ODS. Um, well, yeah, we both played ODS quite a mm-hmm. bit when it first came yeah. out, and I have played some Altus. So, um, my question to you is, do you think that the private servers who are kind of going in the direction of improving the game, trying to add new exciting stuff and get away from the traditional, more nostalgic format, do you think those games have value to them and are they worth playing, or is Toontown just such an outdated, antiquated format that there's not much value in investing the resources into them? Admittedly, ODS is a very low-budget game, and they, I think they do really good with the money that they spend. Yeah, I think it's absolutely worth playing, because, like, well, first of all, playing... It doesn't cost you anything to play any of these servers, so my my if you if you want to play it, then just go for it. It's free. You're not gonna and you're not gonna lose anything. Um, I was the game is obviously outdated though, like graphically, like a game is outdated as all get out. But um, I I do think I've made videos about ODS and you know just gushing over it, and I do think it's worth playing. And I also think um. What is, oh yeah, Altus. I I think they're both worth playing in their own right. It's just the main problem is they're. It doesn't look like they're ever going to get as much attention as rewritten for whatever reason. Because ODS's player base is pretty pitiful. Like to be honest, like the worst part about that game is easily its player base. Altus isn't as bad. Altus when I, the few times I have played it, um, it did have a few hundred people on there. And that's not that's okay. That's not nearly as bad as ODS. But neither of them, both of them combined, as far as player base, can't really compare to TTR. Like it's not even close. All right. So I'm glad you're here because I have kind of a different opinion. I don't think either of the games are worth playing to most people in the community. What I mean by that is, I don't think that the games are worth playing if you haven't already put like a couple hundred hours at least into some version of the original Toontown, either TTO or TTR. Because I feel like there are games that you use if you want to extend to maybe like kind of almost a sequel to the original game. And you have to also be kind of willing to suspend your disbelief of nostalgia because a lot of the features that those games add, at least from my own perspective, kind of take you out of the nostalgia factor. When I was, especially when I was playing Project Altus, I felt like I had a headache and I felt like I was playing nothing that resembled the original game besides the grindy parts I didn't like. So maybe that's just me. Maybe it's because I have more of an attachment to the world than I do to the actual grinding process. But I'm not completely sold on the idea that these games will ever become popular just because I don't think they appeal to enough types of people. And I think that in some ways, by improving the game, you're making it worse because you just make it something that is almost unrecognizable from your childhood. Okay, well, fair enough. Just our opinions, though. Yeah. I... I mean, the nostalgia thing, uh, it did kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? It definitely drove me to play the game for quite a while, but I'm, I don't know, for me personally, I'm so disinterested in Toontown Rewritten right now, like, it's, like I, like I told you, I, I sold my tune, and I don't even feel sorry or regretful about it, so that's why uh, ODS and Altus just seemed interesting to me, there was, I was just like, oh, well, here's you know something new and interesting i guess it all depends on it all depends on like who you are and what you want from toontown because if you are someone that wants the comfort of a recognizable game then yeah ttr is fine for you but like uh i don't know like i i am beyond sick of ttr and i and like some of my friends are beyond sick of ttr like my friend chris too um he is. We we played some of Altus together. We actually played um, six. I think it was like six or seven months ago when it actually came out. Hmm. And then we like played for like a few days, and then we were like, and then we stopped because we found out our tunes were gonna get reset. And it was like, wow. oh. I made it about thirty minutes on Altus before I hated it, and I was playing with three people who I really enjoyed their company, and we all just got so sick of it within thirty minutes. And that's just my perspective. I'm hoping that this? um. This was, again, same time period you were talking about. We didn't actually care about the reset. We were just playing for fun, but we made it, like, 30 minutes. It was myself, um, Tommy, and Lalo. I don't know if you know them. 
Tommy and Lalo. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I know Lalo. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy and Lalo, and um, I was also playing of Alex. And yeah, oh, we, we, I, I know Alex hates it. I know Alex fucking well, hates. It. Yeah, but um, essentially, all four of us just kind of played, and we were trying to have fun. Like we were entertaining ourselves, laughing at the zap gags. Like we tried to go into it with like a pretty good mindset, and it it just didn't do it for us, I guess. Well, what didn't you like about the game? Um, I hated the camera angles. Sounds minor, but they're there constantly. So for me, that's a big deal. I really disliked the initial grind. I feel like that should have built up and ramped up. Because a lot of the grind just felt like it was wasting time as opposed to adding difficulty. I didn't feel like I was forced to take over really hard buildings early on. I just felt like I was forced to fight like 500 cogs on the street as opposed to do something challenging. What I would have preferred is for them to have allowed the game to start off easy so you can hit the ground running and then just hit you with some really hard difficulty spikes that didn't just take tons of hours but really pushed you to the limits of your strategy. Like, say, do one six-story building in the medium part of the game as opposed to do, like, a hundred cogs on the street. Well, um, something to note is the tasks are quite a bit different now than they were six months ago. That is true, but... Alex can attest to this. He, he he does a lot of things, but I don't think he'd lie about this. He said that the first task in Altus, when you first get on, is defeating 30 cogs with level 1 gags. No, that task isn't definitely is not in the game anymore. He, he said it was, post-reset. Um, I just said we definitely didn't. Uh, me and Chris played a few, started playing a few weeks ago because, um... Like, because th- we were like, oh, now our stuff's not going to get reset. Woohoo. And we started playing again. We, have, we did not get that task. We did not get 30 cogs. Oh, maybe you I, I, just was talking about a task from before then. I don't know. He, he might have been. Because I, I, I didn't do know the tasks uh, early on when the game first came out. I knew they were, I know they were like, they were kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I haven't experienced it myself. I can only go off of what I've seen from other people. Because biggest thing is, I mean, I just decided not to go for the Altus thing, because I only have a certain amount of time to play, and I just decided to invest it in the TTR tune. Rather yeah, than something that I'm probably enough. not going to have access to half the time when I need to make, like, footage or whatever. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, okay, I think that's fair. We have different opinions, but it's not like either of us are wrong or right. It's just different perspectives. Yeah, it's not like I'm, I'm like not like hyping this game up to be the best thing ever. Yeah, no, like, I know. You're, you're, you're just giving a realistic reason why you like it. Yeah. Or would at least consider it having potential. Yeah. So, um, any any big regrets on the past with either YouTube or Toontown? Anything that you have a, that's a big regret that you can actually like say on a podcast? Um, I kind of regret uh being so toxic, but I was like sixteen, and teenagers are demons. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't let anyone tell you differently. Teenagers are fucking evil, hmm. and I was no exception to that rule. And um. Them. And like, okay, I bet, and I regret being a jerk to like my friends and my fans because I feel like I did like burn a lot of bridges, like with people like Kyle and Lefty. Like, I definitely burned bridges with them, and I could still, I could still be good friends with them uh, now. But um, I remember I crossed the line, and we never really, you know made amends after that and then i regret like i said i regret being i regret being jerks to my fans too like i told you like mm-hmm. if my fans recognize me in game i would just yeah. either ignore them i would leave or just like be mean to them tell them to yeah, go away or whatever i think like for me my biggest regrets were first of all i put up so many shitty youtube videos and also i didn't make the videos i actually wanted to because i think i could have had a lot more success if i actually made the videos i thought were good back when, like, everyone cared about this game. And also, if I stopped making filler, I also kind of regret provoking, like, everybody so much, because I did so many things where I would just bait people into, like, being pissed at me, and it was hilarious, but it also kind of led to me getting, like, my life turned into a living hell for two months, so I kind of regret that. I don't think I did anything wrong, but I regret doing that decision. Now, how would you say you, like, baited people? Um, I made a video taunting everyone because I didn't get terminated for hacking. Oh, that was... Actually, I remember that. Oh my god. I have no... Re- I don't think I did anything wrong making the video, but I think I regret what happened because I made it, if that makes sense. You Oh, yeah. Because I'm sure some people were 
triggered by that. Like, I'm sure Kyle, maybe Kyle saw that and he was just like, really, nigga? Everyone who'd been terminated was triggered by it. It didn't even matter if they were YouTubers or not. It was just a triggering thing to do. And I thought it was hilarious because it was just the most fuck you thing I could ever do. And I thought it was fucking funny as hell at the time. And I still do, but I just kind of regret that it kind of ruined my YouTube channel and ruined my life <laughs> at the time. I think I was sub- I was probably subconsciously triggered about it because I was like, oh yeah, I know. It was like it was just I don't know. I felt like it was like a really bold thing, so I'm kind of proud that I did it because it was just like the most like middle finger thing you could ever post. Yeah, it's like imagine if someone like fucking vlogged themselves like driving drunk and pointed like the driveway and getting away with it. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Like I don't know. I I think the idea behind it was fucking cool. I thought, but obviously it was. It got a lot of backlash, and I do kind of regret that part. Yeah. But, I, de- I definitely yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't do that anymore. I wouldn't do the hacking or the video probably today, but I don't know. It was an interesting time. It definitely was. So, let's see. A couple more questions. How much money did you actually make from the whole time when you were monetized? Because I know you had a little trouble with that at one point, but I was just curious. Like, How much did you actually end up hauling in total between... Well, I guess, let's just say, in the time on Malo 45, how much money have you made from that channel lifetime? Zero dollars and zero cents. I never actually got a check. Oh, man. I was set to, like, receive a check for, like, two or three hundred dollars. Oh, my God. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that much money, but, like... No, it's not. I've made, like, tons more than that in an internship, and I'm sure you've made more than that at your jobs. Yeah, and, you know, I was about to get that money, and then, um, I'm pretty sure you remember this, but... Some dude, like, spammed one of my videos with, like, the same comment over and over again, and they accused me of boosting. Yeah. And I didn't really have a way to defend myself, so they just ripped my monetization from me, and then I didn't get my money. Yeah, that's the risk of not being partnered. You have no way to defend yourself. But you do make better money. They take a lot of money in the partnership, so. Yeah. It's just kind of a risk. Like, I'm not partnered right now. If somebody wanted to ruin my channel by spamming me, I could lose my, like, AdSense or whatever. I don't think anyone cares enough, but, you know. Oh. Oh, if any of you out there watching want to, like, you know, see if you can ruin my channel, go for it. I don't really care that much. I mean, I'll survive without it, but um, point stands that you make more money, you get a better cut. Like, almost everyone I know is partnered, so YouTube, um, or your your network and YouTube will both take out chunks of what you earn. For me, I just get the straight direct revenue, so I get quite a bit of money on my CPM compared to other people making yeah. videos. Well, hopefully that same asshole isn't out there plotting to ruin your YouTube channel. Yeah. Which, like I said, it wouldn't be that big a deal. They also probably... First of all, it wouldn't be a big deal. I'd still make the videos. And second of all, I mean, it would be pretty... I think they've gotten better at detecting that stuff. And also, I would definitely know what I would be saying to like the community. Like I'd, I would be able to talk about it and be old enough to like type up something that would make sense to them. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, here's a good question. Um... Either in the past or now, are you? Have you ever been embarrassed to tell people that you know in real life about the fact that you had you were a big Toontown YouTuber? Were you ever embarrassed to tell people that? Uh, back in the day, yes, I was. It was like a super duper secret uh, when in two thousand twelve and whatnot. Now I don't. Really, now I really could not give less of a shit if people in my real life know or not. Yeah, for me, it's kind of the opposite in a way, like. Back in the day, all my friends knew I made YouTube videos. They didn't watch them or anything, but they knew that I made them, and, like, no one really gave a shit. I was already a weird kid. I was, like, that guy who was obsessed with getting fucking 99.9% in high school, and I was, like, neurotic and anxious as fuck. I'm, like, a really weird person IRL, so people already thought I was a fucking screwed loose type guy, so... The fact I played Toontown, if anything, just made sense to them. And um, now, I don't know. I don't tell as many people now because it just feels kind of weird doing it in college. Like, as far as, like, telling people about it. I usually just tell them, but I make commentary videos or gaming videos. And they yeah. don't, and I don't give them the link. <laughs> and that's how it stays. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so any, anything else you um, want to talk about or mention or anything we didn't quite cover that you think would be good to get in there? Let's see. Um... We talked about my history. On oh yeah, fun fact. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers ATL Spade Forty Five, <laughs> but uh, to give you an idea of how much how grimy I was, um, why did I? I don't even remember the original. 
Oh, I think uh, I think the reason I gave for moving channels was that I got a copyright strike. But the reason I moved channels was so that uh, I could get monetized again. Oh, I did I that too. Mon- yeah, I can't get monetized in Malo Forty Five like ever again. Like it's yeah. it, it, it's still there. Like I could never yeah. get monetized. It also like, probably it's... didn't help your case when you went to appeal it when you had copyrighted m- music all over your channel. Oh no! I I, I de- before I got monetized, I deleted all the videos with copyrighted music. Mm-hmm. So that. This might also be a coincidence or weird, but I have noticed that all the channels that used to have copyrighted music and deleted them, like my original Spoonful of Pasta, your original Mal45, all ended up getting flagged and losing their monetization. But I have not seen a lot of channels that started out with a clean slate actually end up losing their monetization. Like, well, how, that have never... Out again. Oh, you couldn't hear me? Okay, so... What I was saying was that I've never really seen channels that never started off with, like, you know, using Linkin Park music or, like the music that you and I used back in the day, most of the channels that had that problem where you'd get demonetized originally had um, copyrighted music and then deleted it. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. I just noticed that. Yeah. But I kind of regret it. Because I kind of regret deleting that solo CEO because now I don't have a solo CEO on my channel and that video is, like, gone forever because the the computer that, um, that the video was on... It, that computer just bricked. Oh, yeah. This is useless yeah. now. I have zero copies of all my original videos because my ending to YouTube, like I said, was pretty traumatic, and I wanted to basically pretend it never happened because of how fucking horrible those last few months were. Right. So I just deleted every trace I had of my original channel and all the like hard copies of everything that I had saved up. So I could never get those videos back if I wanted to, and honestly, I think it's, I'm fine with them being gone. I'm fine. I think what I've built up this last year or so is way better than... The stuff I had before, and I'm at peace with it. Yep, absolutely. Um, so anything else? Or you think that's pretty good? I can't really think of anything else right now. So, how All long right. have we been talking for? Yeah, it's been about an hour. I don't know if it's a little bit over or under, but we're definitely somewhat close to an hour. Let's see, you started the call at 10.18. Oh, it's been over an hour. But you, there were small points where we didn't record within that call. Yeah, fair enough. I think it's, it's, probably... Yeah, I think it's been just about an hour. But... Yep. Anyhow, um, thank you all for watching. Um, thank you, Chris, for being the test guest for this new podcast idea. No problem. I, and, am, uh, I, I take pride on being a good guinea pig. Of course. And also, I have um, one donation to thank for, from the last video. So, again, I'm just going to be doing these at the end. If you want to be featured, links in the description. One generous soul gave me $7.50, um, donor name Andrew. And he said, I like your YouTube content. I hope you find a use for this. Keep making videos, dude. Smiley face. Um, Thank you very much, Andrew. I will try to use your money responsibly. And I appreciate your support. I think that'll do it for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'll try to make these podcasts at least once a week. Um, Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.